With the 2023 season right around the corner, and tons of drivers across IndyCar and the road to Indy looking to prove themselves, I think now would be a perfect time to show off some drivers of note. Whether this is your first year following the Indy scene, or your 30th, this is a video for you. In no particular order, these are my drivers to look at for in 2023. In the first year of the USF Junior Series, 18-year-old Canadian Mac Clark took the championship with 5 wins on the year and a grand total of 12 podiums. He had some awesome drives this year, including going from the back of the grid to the podium in the season finale at Coda. On top of winning the inaugural USF Juniors title in 2022, he also won in his first ever USF 2000 race weekend in Portland. He shows a lot of promise and will be competing in USF 2000 for this upcoming 2023 season. Keep an eye on the speedy Canadian, because there's a real real chance you'll leave this year with yet another title. To IndyCar fans of the late 90s and early 2000s, the last name Giafoni will sound familiar. Well, the name is set to return to the Road to Indy ladder. Enter Nicholas Giafoni, the son of IndyCar race winner Philippe Giafoni. Nick is off the back of a successful year in Brazilian F4, which saw him grab three wins on his way to a fifth place points finish. Those are decent numbers for his first year in cars, and it'll be interesting to see how he does this year in USF Juniors. Another young Brazilian on the USF Juniors grid is Lucas Facuri. After a successful career in karts, which saw him win races and championships in both his native Brazil and the US, he's now moving into cars. He and Nick Giafoni will be part of the same team, D-Force Racing. It's safe to say there's some talented Brazilians coming through the road to Indy system, and once Tony Kanan and Elio Casanevas both hang up their helmets, it looks like there's gonna be some drivers to fly the Brazilian flag. After winning the USF 2000 and Indy Pro 2000 championships in back-to-back -back years, Rasmussen entered the Indy Light Series last year, and was one gallon of fuel short of winning his first ever race in his first start. He had a frankly inconsistent 2022, but still managed to pick up two wins and finish sixth in the championship. The Dane is with HMD Dale Coyne for this year, and is looking to complete his sweep of the road to Indy ladder by taking the championship and punching his ticket to IndyCar in 2024. But if I was a betting man, I would put my money on the man that beat him to the Rookie of the Year title last year. With two wins, three poles, and seven podiums, Hunter McElroy finished fourth in last year's Indy Lights Championship. With more resources and experience under his belt, my money would be on McElroy. He's looking to become the first New Zealander to win the Indy Lights Championship since 2000, when Scott Dixon took the championship in his second season in the series. If you're in the same category as Scott Dixon, you gotta be doing something right. McElroy won't have it easy this year, as his teammate is Lewis Foster, your 2022 Indy Pro 2000 champion. But if I had to put money on who's gonna walk away with the first ever Indy NXT title, it's gonna be Hunter McElroy. Continuing with the Indy NXT field, we take a look at the only female competing this year, Andretti Autosports' Jamie Chadwick. Jamie is a three-time champion of the W Series, and in fact is the only champion in series history. With a fully funded program this year, I don't think it's too unrealistic to predict a couple podiums and maybe even a win or two. Keep an eye out on her in the DHL number 28, because I personally think she's the best female IndyCar prospect since Simone Di Silvestro. <laughs> Despite only being 18, Kiffin Simpson is a hot commodity at the moment. He's a Chip Ganassi development driver, and if he has a fantastic season in 2023, it's very likely that he'll be in that 11 car part-time in 2024, or even be Alex Pelot's full-time replacement in the 10 car. Only time will tell what the kid from Barbados can do this year, but I think he has the potential to turn some heads. Finally, we move on to the biggest stars of them all, the IndyCar drivers. And to start, I want to talk about David Malukas. I'll go out on a limb and say that Malukas is going to impress even more this year than last. And that includes taking Dale Coyne back to victory lane for the first time since St. Pete in 2018.
While most other drivers are on this list because I think they'll do great, Jack Harvey is on here because I think he's on the chopping block. Last year in the high V Ray Hall number 45 was pretty poor, with Harvey only getting a single top 10. It was so bad that Ray Hall shuffled their lineup. As for 2023, Harvey will be in the number 30 car, with promising young gun and former Alpine junior Christian Lungard in the 45. If Jack doesn't turn around his performances this year, it's likely we could see Ray Hall drop him after just two seasons. Jack has the talent to do great things in that car. It's just that he and the team need to piece it together this year. After a couple of bad years at Andretti, which no doubt will make their appearances on my season review series, Alex Rossi for the first time in his IndyCar career will be with another team. Although Rossi finally broke through and won a race last year, I still have some lingering questions on how he'll do this year. Will the change in scenery bring Alex Rossi back to his winning ways, or will there be some growing pains? Leave your opinions down below. So there's my list of the drivers I think people should keep their eye on in 2023. What do you think about the drivers I mentioned, and do you have another driver that you'll pay close attention to? I would love to know what you think in the comments section. Thank you for watching, and have a great afternoon.